actions louder than words? Will there be marriage in heaven? Can all of the commandments be narrowed down to one or two? These are some of the questions that Jesus answers on Tuesday of Passion Week. We're in this week that we call Passion Week or Holy Week, and we're, we're taking each day of the week and looking at some of the things that was going on in the life of Jesus during that week and on that specific day. Today happens to be Tuesday, April the 7th, so we're going to look at some things that happened in the life of Jesus on this Tuesday. Where we're at in this process, he'd, he'd entered into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, and on Monday, uh, he had went uh, after Tuesday, uh, Sunday evening, he went back to Bethany. And then on Monday, went back uh, to Jerusalem. He cursed a fig tree. And we talked all about that, a little bit about that yesterday. He went to the temple and he cleansed it. Went back to Bethany. And then on Tuesday, he goes back to Jerusalem. Now, you can, you can take the Gospels and Matthew Basically, Matthew uh, chapter 21 through 25 talks about all the things that happens on Tuesday. And Luke is chapter 20 and 21. And in Mark is chapter 11, 12, and 13. There's a lot of teaching that happens here. And I think sometimes we, um, we forget that or we've never really taken the time to understand that. We've heard a lot of these teachings, and I'm going to highlight a few of them. But it gives us a context of actually when this took place, that this took place just a few days before the the crucifixion and matthew chapter 21 and verse 23 on tuesday it, this has been tuesday sometime tuesday probably most likely in the morning morning it says in matthew 21 23 when jesus returned to the temple so he went to the temple after he cleansed it and began teaching the leading priests and elders came up to him they demanded by what authority are you doing all these things who gave you the right? Now, Jesus goes on in that situation and plays a little game with them, and uh, he, they can't answer his question, so he doesn't answer their question. So during this time, Jesus is constantly teaching. And I think that's important for us to, to realize. Jesus, just, Jesus didn't go sit on a rock somewhere for three or four days waiting uh, for what was going to happen. He continued to do what he was doing, even though he knew what was going to happen. He's constantly teaching. And as he's teaching, people are coming up and asking questions. Sometimes he answered their questions. Sometimes he didn't. And so we see that even in, in, our, in our study in Acts. We've seen in Acts chapter 1 how even after his resurrection, those 40 days between the resurrection and the ascension, it says that Jesus went about teaching them about the kingdom of God. And when you look at the teachings of Jesus, this idea of the kingdom of God comes up a lot. And so I want to uh, just kind of highlight a little bit about that. Uh, when you hear the word kingdom of God, or kingdom of heaven, or God's kingdom, what's Jesus talking about? Well, he's talking about life with him. He's not talking about going to heaven when you die. That's, that's, that's true. That is a part of the deal. But it's not just that. There's so much more. Jesus is talking about, hey, I want to be in life with you. I want you to have my life. I've come that you might have life and life to the full. Another word for life is salvation. I've come that you would have salvation and have salvation to the full. God wants us to be in his kingdom. Jesus wants us to be a part of his kingdom. That means life with him. I'm going to look at three things that Jesus taught on this Tuesday. The first one is, is found in Matthew chapter 21, verses 28 through 32. It says, but what do you think about this? A man with two sons told the older boy, son, go out and work in the vineyard today. The son answered, no, I won't go. But later he changed his mind and went anyway. Then the father told the other son, you go. And he said, yes, sir, I will. But he didn't go. Which of these two obeyed the father? Pretty simple story, right? One said he wasn't going to go and he did. And one said he was and he didn't. And they replied, well, it was the first son. The, the son that was really the obedient son was the son who said he wasn't going to do it, but then he went ahead and did it. Then Jesus explained his meaning. He said, I tell you the truth. Corrupt tax collectors and prostitutes will get into the kingdom of God before you do. There's that kingdom of God phrase. I, life with him. For John the Baptist came and showed you the right way to live. The right way to live. We need to highlight that, underline that. But you didn't believe him while tax collectors and prostitutes did. The right way to live is going to follow after I believe. 
and and even when you had uh, let me start off verse 32 for john the baptist came and showed you the right way to live but you didn't believe him while tax collectors and prostitutes did and even when you saw this happening, you refused to believe him and repent of your sins. One of the things that has always been a part of Christianity, is it about what I believe or is it about what I do? And there are people who say, well, I believe all the right things and I've said the prayer, so I'm good. And their life doesn't represent anything related to a life with God. Are those people in a good place? No. Then there's the people that says, you know what, I'm going to work really hard. I'm going to do everything I can to earn my way. Are those people in a good place? No. Those two extremes don't work. It is, it is putting the two things together. I've got to believe. And as I believe, then my life is going to change. I love the way... Uh, Dallas Wheeler talks about this. He says, listen, I need to stop worrying about getting into heaven. I need to stop trying to get into heaven, and I need to get heaven into me. And that's what the Christian life is. This is what Jesus is constantly talking about when he talks about being a part of God's kingdom. It's his life. He's saying, listen, I have life, and I want you to have it. I have life, and you need it. It's not just a, hey, I've, I've, I've checked off the boxes of the things that I'm supposed to believe, and I've said my little prayer, so I'm good. No, that is not the gospel Jesus preached. And nor did Jesus preach a gospel that said, do all of these things, and if you do all of these things, then you're good. It's the two things coming together. So my actions are going to speak louder than my words. We need to understand that. One of the questions that we should be asking ourselves constantly is, do I act in accordance to what I say I believe? Do I act in accordance to what I say I believe? Jesus is saying, he says, John the Baptist came and he told you how to live. But you wouldn't believe him, and he didn't change the way that you lived. So there, Jesus has given the parable of two sons. Our actions speak louder than our words. The other one I want to highlight is a, is a passage of Scripture about the resurrection. And this is in Matthew chapter 22, verses 23 through 33. That same day, Jesus was approaching. Again, this is that same day being Tuesday. Jesus was approached by some Sadducees. Now, Sadducees did not believe in a resurrection. They believe that once you die, that's it, nothing else. That's why the, re the way I can remember that is that's why they were sad, you see, because they did not believe in a resurrection. Now, Pharisees, the other religious group, did believe in a resurrection, but the Sadducees didn't. These are religious leaders who say there is no resurrection from the dead. They pose this question, teacher Moses teacher, Moses said, if a man dies without children, his brother should marry the widow and have children uh, who will carry on the brother's name. Well, suppose there were seven brothers. And then what they, what the thing that they present to Jesus here is, listen, one brother marries her, uh, no children, he dies. She, she, then the next brother marries her, no children, he dies. Then the next brother, and it goes all the way down. And then they ask the question, okay, so after the resurrection, when they're in heaven, who's, who is she married to? Okay, and now here's Jesus' reply. Your mistake is that you don't know the scriptures and you don't know the power of God. That's a pretty big mistake, isn't it? So they ask a the question. And Jesus' response is, well, here's your mistake. You don't know the scriptures. And you don't know the power of God. You don't know the scriptures. And you don't know the power of God. Is that you? Oh, Marty, I know the scriptures. I've been in Bible study all my life. Do you know the power of God? Just because you can get all the answers right on the Sunday school test doesn't mean a thing. If you have experienced the power and the love of God. Jesus says, hey, here's your mistake. Now he keeps on. And he actually answers their question. He says, for when the dead rise, they will neither marry nor be given in marriage. So when we get to heaven, there's not going to be any marriage. Nobody's going to be married in heaven. In this respect, there will be, we will be like angels in heaven. We're not going to be angels in heaven. It's not what he's saying. He said, in this respect. But now, as to whether there will be a resurrection of the dead, haven't you ever heard about the scriptures? Long after Abraham, Isaac, Jacob had died, God said, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. So he is the God of the living, not the dead. 
When the crowds heard him, they were astonished or astounded at his teaching. So, are our actions louder than our words? Yes. Will there be marriage in heaven? No. And I know this is really hard. You know, sometimes I get in trouble when I talk about pets not being in heaven. So now, you know, he's saying, talk about, talk about not being married in heaven. Well, first of all, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying there's not going to be marriage in heaven. So let's just get that straight, okay? Pastor Marty's not saying that. Jesus is. Jesus is saying, when we are resurrected, there's not going to be any marriage. Well, Marty, how can that be? I don't know, but I know that whatever God has is going to be far better than anything that we can experience on this earth. So at a time when we're, there's a lot of people talking about death, and there's, there's, as we're looking forward to Easter and, and, and on our way to Easter and thinking about a resurrection, here on this Tuesday, Jesus answers a very specific question. The next passage of Scripture is, is just the next one. It's in verses 34 through 40. It says, but when the Pharisees heard that they had silenced the, that he had silenced the Sadducees with his reply, they met together to question him once again. So, the, Sad, the Pharisees heard that the Sadducees got put in their place. So they're like, okay, well, that we, it's our turn. So they come and they ask one of them, an expert in religious law, tried to trap him with this question: "Teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses?" Now they're trying to trap him. Okay? His response, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. The second one is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. Now, love. We're going to love God, love our neighbor, and love ourselves. We're, we're going to understand and be reminded that love is an action. It's not a feeling. Now, feelings come with it, but love's not a feeling, love's an action. Our actions are louder than our words. And we're supposed to love God with everything we've got, love our neighbor, and love ourselves. And sometimes words are necessary. Words are necessary. So sometimes I need to tell the people that I love that I love them. The reason that I really wanted to point to this passage of Scripture was really to give you a, the context of where it's located. You've heard Many people teach on this. You've heard that if you're a Christian or been around church very much, you've heard that most of your life. Did you ever realize that it was just happening, that this is when Jesus was asked this and that he answered this just a couple of days before the cross? That's when this was answered. Now, there's many other things that Jesus taught, and Matthew lays it out and gives us those things. Uh, I would challenge you to spend some time in your devotional time, maybe as you're reading Proverbs and some of the other things that we've been talking about, to read some of these. And let the Spirit, before you read it, say, Jesus, what do you want to teach me in this? Holy Spirit, what do you want to teach me about this passage of Scripture? See what God does with it. On this Tuesday, leading up to the cross on Friday and the resurrection on Saturday, Jesus did a lot of teaching. He was asked some questions that he didn't answer. He was asked some questions that he did answer. And there was some, just some things he wanted everyone to know. So I hope that gives you a couple of things to think about um, on this Tuesday. Uh, tomorrow we'll release uh, Community at Home again at 3 o'clock. And we'll look at, uh, dive into what some things that happened on Wednesday. Let you know what's going to happen on Thursday. We're going to release at 6 o'clock on our Community at Home. Uh, our Passover communion time as a church. Now you have a choice on Thursday night. You can come to communion at home and you can watch it, uh, or you can go to Facebook and you can go to our Facebook uh, live page as a church, or you can go to my uh, Facebook uh, page and I'm going to lead a communion service from my home live on Thursday night. But that's only on Facebook, so you have to be on Facebook for that. If you don't want to do that, then Community at Live will go. Uh, will be released at 6 o'clock on Thursday to do that. So keep that in mind as we go through the next couple of days. Hang in there. We're in this together. We're doing great. We're going to be okay. Uh, it's okay to be a little nervous. It's okay to be a little scared. No problem. Well, let's just make sure that we're taking that nervousness and we're taking that fear to Jesus and leaving it with Him. Can't wait to see you. Uh, you, like I said, let's hang in there together and we'll talk to you soon.